USS Soriskine, 27,000 ton Essex class carrier, awaits launching at New York Navy Yard. Mrs. Clarence Cannon, wife of Missouri Congressman Cannon, is the sponsor, and the giant ship slides down the ways to join Uncle Sam's mighty peacetime Navy. The carrier was appropriately named for a crucial battle of the Revolutionary War. The Navy is proud of the ship which will help keep a hard-won peace. One of the war's top draw secrets was the making of the maps which permitted B-29s to bomb Japan into submission with such incredible accuracy. Army officers and artists at a California studio make a mock-up of the general area surrounding Tokyo. These areas are gradually pieced together to make a larger map. Not a single detail is omitted as the contour map takes shape. Even rice paddies and clusters of trees are indicated. In the final step, the mock-up is daubed with a special mixture that permits best photographic results. The larger sections are now pushed into place and final touches are added. When complete, the map is 80 feet long and 60 feet wide. The camera is placed above the map on a crane. It moves at a ratio comparable to the speed of a B-29. And this is the way it looks to a bombardier flying at 30,000 feet. Completed films were rushed to Saipan for the briefing of crews. No wonder they seldom missed. On the White House lawn, members of the Army Ground Forces awaiting their honors see President Truman pin the Medal of Honor on Corporal Clarence B. Kraft of Santa Ana, California. Officials look on while Corporal Desmond T. Doss of Lynchburg, Virginia, also received the nation's highest decoration. A total of 15 heroic men were likewise honored at this ceremony. Corporal Kraft staged a one-man attack against the Japs on Okinawa that was really news. Corporal Doss, conscientious objector and medical corpsman, performed with outstanding bravery. General Marshall congratulates a gallant... The customer that gets one of these lobsters will have no cause to complain that they were a long time in transit. The pilot of this tow glider is ready for a pickup on the beach at Hull, Massachusetts, starting the first successful cargo operation of this type. The pickup plane comes in at 130 miles per hour and the glider gets away within 50 feet. Two hours later, the lobster train is over Teterboro, New Jersey airport without the loss of a claw. In the past, a 30% loss often resulted when the lobsters drank melted water from the ice in which they were packed. But flying at high altitudes makes icing unnecessary. As soon as the glider hits the ground, the flying crustaceans will be rushed to New York seafood fanciers eager for fresh ocean lobster. A forecast of bigger and better sky trains for the future. 